stay here because I have nothing. And that's how I used to be. I'm not that way now. But because he was patient enough and he knew how to minister to his wife to get me to uh, open up and be an active participant in the marriage. How many know what I'm talking about? Because a lot of times there's only one part of the of the marriage that's participating, that's doing 200% of the work, while the other one is, let me know when uh, it's, it's our time, you know, together while you're doing all of the hard labor. The other one is sitting back waiting for you to come to bed. <clears throat> you know, what is up with that? But anyway, let me move on. <laughs> How did, yeah, right, how did I get there, right? Okay, let me see. Let me see. Okay, okay. okay. have anybody ever heard this phrase? Uh, marriage is like flies on a screen. You got those waiting to get in and those waiting to get out. Isn't that something? Too bad for those that are waiting to get out. Because now that you're in Christ, there's, there's no out. You're in it for the long haul. But then those that are waiting to get in, and that may not be any of you here, any unmarrieds here, that are waiting to get in, and that's the stance that a lot of unmarrieds take. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's because it seems to be taking a while. And a lot of unmarrieds have been married. God allowed them to experience um, the natural union and this natural union for them they may have never really become one and that was probably the problem why they you know are not together for eternity like God's intention was they probably never became one and I believe the reason for that could very well be because of the process they never really learned the purpose as to why God instituted the covenant of marriage in the first place and what their roles really are. And Pastor is going to come and he's going to talk, uh, not just yet, but because uh, it's still my turn. Um, because, uh, <laughs> what does that say? Um, no, because we don't always understand what our role is. Like I said before, people just up and, you know what? I think I love you. Mm. Hey, you love me? You know what? Why don't we just, why don't we go on and get married? Why don't we just get married? You know, I think that'll be cute. I think that'll be fun if we just got married. You know, that that's the mentality of a lot of people, these young and old. You know, a lot of people just take it so lightly and that God has so much more. There, there was a, a, a there was such a higher plan for marriage, and as I talked about before, and I was here, you know what, maybe I should read a scripture, right honey? <laughs> he always gets on me about, uh, make sure you get a Bible, can I speak, can I? <laughs> instead of just going on and on. I do have, I'm just gonna give you this one verse, and then I'm gonna give him the mic, cause he's gonna, he seems to be cool and calm and collected right now, but when I get home, he's gonna, <laughs> He's going to talk about me. But um, I do want to share this one verse of scripture in Ephesians, Ephesians 5. Um, and it's talking about, and I don't know if you all caught this, but hopefully you did. I'm sure you all are Bible scholars. There are many pastors here as well. And so um, I'm sure you know this verse of scripture. It talks about the role of the wife and the role of the husband. Let me just go up here to verse 22. I'll start with... Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And what I'm doing here and what I want you to listen for is the first natural and then the spiritual part. This is not, and a lot of times when we're in counseling or when we're in marriage meetings or whatever, we hear about, you know, wives, submit yourselves unto your, you know, submit yourselves to your husbands, right? We, and, you know, a lot of things are, uh, a lot of the attention is zeroed in on that kind of thing. But that's the natural part. What about the spiritual part? As unto the Lord. She's to submit herself unto her husband. 
but as unto the Lord. And so if she's submitting herself to the Lord first, then there shouldn't be a problem with her submitting herself to her own husband, right? Okay, the next one is uh, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ. <laughs> oh, Jesus. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. So again... The natural part is the husband is the head of the wife. The natural husband is the head of the wife, even as even husbands, even as Christ is head of the church. And remember that we husbands and wives are symbolic of Christ and the church. And so if Christ gave himself to the church, and saved the body. Look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> if Christ saved the body, then husbands, as the head of the wife, you're the head as Christ is the head, as Christ is. Just like Christ is the head of the church and does all that he does for the church, his bride, he saves the body. He saves her body, meaning we, we already talked about what it meant to, to be saved, meaning uh, receive forgiveness. Um, let me let me turn over here this way. Um, receive forgiveness and all of those things, and uh, even um, you know uh, being been set free, set free from all of our faults, all of our you know foes and woes and everything that we could ever do to another individual. You're saved. You're covered. Amen. Husbands, that's what you're to do. Covered. Just like Christ covered the church. You're covered. You're covered. And so it's a great responsibility on both both parties, but a lot of times because of what we see in the natural, I just see my tall, dark, and handsome, and I see my, you know, my woo, my good thing. That's what I see, and so that's where we keep it. That's where we keep it. But it's so much more powerful. It's so much more divine. And when I say divine, you know what that means. Sp divine, spiritual, God, me and God. Yes. Me and God. It's not just me and him. Right. It's not just about that. But it's about me and him and him and him. You know, and then us and him. Yes. That's what it's about. Amen. And that's why it's important that the unmarrieds uh, and I was telling my husband, I, we need to, to make sure every unmarried is in some marriage seminars and in all kind of, you know, marriage counseling settings so that you as unmarrieds can know and understand what your role is right now to Christ. Because we, you need to be practicing. See, God did allow uh, married couples to marry so that we could practice in the natural. You know, we're just practicing. And God allowed us the ability to have a little pleasure as we're practicing. And it's not all pleasure. We know that, right? There, there is some pleasure, but there are some hardships as well. But nevertheless, God is allowing us to practice. Because in the end, there won't be any marriage. Did you know the scriptures that my husband said that broke his heart when he found, found out about that, that when he gets to glory, he can't take his wife. Isn't that sweet? That was so sweet when he told me that. <laughs> I'll be there, honey, but I, we both are going to be married to, to our husband. We'll both be worshiping him, doing praise and worship with our, with our husband. And it will, so we better do all we can do together down here because once we get to glory, you know, we'll have to part. <laughs> we'll have to part. But we won't need to be married because we'll be so fulfilled. We won't need another person because we'll be so fulfilled with the king of glory that we won't need another person to fulfill anything that we could see now we think our spouse is fulfilling a need that we have right we should we we need to rethink that because is it really happening <laughs> Is it, is it real? I mean, don't, mm -mm. do not respond, please. Please do not respond. But, I mean, think about it. Is it really, are you being fulfilled? And I, 
understand what I'm saying. <laughs> because it's so spiritual, you all, you have to be spiritual in order to receive all that God has given you. You can't just expect to receive in the natural. Okay, so, um, oh, I was reading my verse of scripture. <laughs> Verse 24 says, after we've talked about the, the wife submitting and the husband being the head and then the savior of the body, uh, verse 24 says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So again, if we, the body of Christ, the church, is subject to the word and the will of God, wives should demonstrate that same type of submission. And how many know if you go to if you're a member of a church where a pastor preaches all the time, he talks a lot about obeying the scriptures. That's why it's being preached to us and why it's being ministered so that we can have understanding and with that understanding we're able to do what it is Christ is is commissioning us to do. And how many know it's for our own good? It's for our own good. And so that's the idea that we're to be um we're to be doing and uh, being obedient and submitting wives just as we must do in the church. Verse 25 says, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. And how much did Christ love the church? So much that he gave, mm, so much that he gave his life. And I see some sad faces out here, <laughs> some men like, hmm. But this is, this is, this is, and, and a lot of these, <coughs> never mind, let me, let, let me move on. Um, we're going to let, we're going to let the Holy Spirit do the work that he wants to do. But verse 26 says, um, uh, verse 25 says again, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And that's what I told you all my husband did for me. He, he um, <laughs> before he knew any better, he would kind of beat me with the word. Um, but then once he really understood what was happening and what his role really was, which is right here.